it's Eric here from Lapfix. We got another video for you guys today. Today we're going to be looking at this WD Western Digital Passport or My Passport Ultra, and this is actually a USB drive. You can actually see this has a little micro USB connection there. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be taking a look at it, to see what the symptoms are, and see what's going on. So the best thing to do, right? Let's just plug it in, see if the symptoms that we're getting. I get this long, nice. <laughs> cable for the extender so it's great for you guys to actually see and I don't have to get up right <laughs> so it's a great uh, let's go ahead and plug this in see what we get right now so we'll plug in the drive and we see that the light does come on it's actually spinning so it should even pop up on my audio oops I think I actually Okay, and you see a pop up over here. It just keeps connecting and disconnecting there. And let's go ahead and go to our screen capture. We see what? We see that this drive is not available. Make sure it's connected or it's inserted, but you can hear it over and over again. It was giving a, a problem there. So let's go ahead and actually see what's going on inside there because obviously it's not able to be accessed. It just keeps connecting, disconnecting. We need to see if there's a problem with the port or what else is going on. So let's actually take a look at it. Let's open it up and take a look. If we want to open it up, let's take a little bit of a pry tool there. We'll get started with a thin edge and then do the rest of plastic because we want to see what's going on inside, right? Okay, so we'll open it up. Let me take this out of the shell. There we go. Let's take a look here. Do we see anything obvious? Is there anything going on? What do you guys notice though? This is actually a full on USB a hard drive which means that the board itself is a USB drive as well. Now, a big problem with this, especially when we try to send commands and we do other things, especially if we're working with a tool such as like a PC3000, a lot of times when you need to do any type of work with the drive, we would need to have um, it communicate properly, right? And that will be done mainly through a SATA connection. So a lot of times, especially if you watch our, our other videos, you have a lot about talking about these ones, especially with Western Digital Drives, usually what we would have to find is a very similar, but not just similar, but a compatible a PCB that is actually a SATA uh, one because the USB port isn't going to cut it. So we have the PCB up and we see that there are connections that go here connect to the drive as well as connections that go over here to connect to the drive. And there's contact points over here which match up to the same thing whenever you put the PCB in, right? And then there's also another connection over here for the drive. A lot of times, especially for these ones, um, we may see that this could actually be extremely dirty, especially if it's older. It could actually be very, very dirty. Um, you might see this maybe a little bit darker color. Um, this one's actually very, very clean, so it doesn't really look like to be a, the case. Uh, sometimes if you look here, they could be a little bit darker too. And a good way to actually clean that up if you do see that is sometimes you can just use an eraser, and that actually does help with a connection for that. Um, you need to be obviously really careful because you don't want to scratch it, but you just want to just very slightly remove um, anything that's making um, that could be interfering with the contact there, but we look to be pretty good here. This looks actually really nice um, Let's go ahead. Let's take up um, This little pad here and Since we're a data recovery center We do actually have supplies of PCBs that are compatible with a lot of the USB ones because this is what we do and um, What we need to do now is because of it's really important especially on these ones See in this area that this is the u12. This is where the BIOS goes now. We need to swap over the BIOS from the original to the SATA one because that's how you're going to be able to locate your data on the drive. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to remove the old one and place it on the donor one here. Okay, now we're going to put the chip back, just using flux again for it, hot air. You just need to be really careful because you don't want to put too much heat, otherwise it will damage it. Um, but yeah, it looks to be solid. We're just going to clean it up, put some alcohol, clean it up there. Don't want any flux to be there, and that should be really good. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. Okay. Now we have a SATA drive. See that the BIOS is on here. still having an issue in file explorer so let's go ahead and use pc3000 so we bring up our pc3000 software 
drive, family, all look to be good. We can see the model number, serial number, capacity, um, all the other information for the drive. And we're able to actually get to extractor two. We can actually see the root here, and here's the data. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys are watching this video on recovering the data from a Western Digital USB external drive. But we have all the tools such as PC3000. We have PCB boards here, um, compatible ones like that. We have a whole setup for this for data recovery. So hope you guys are watching, and please leave a like if you did. And see you guys next video. Thanks a lot. Take care, guys. Bye.